All right. So today I want to take a moment and talk about folding instead of NeoVim. And I've got, sometimes I make notes just to keep a little checklist about what I want to cover. And I can tell you that this in terms of notes is just the beginning of what I could talk about when it comes to fold. So I'm not going to get to all of this, but I am going to try and take a little bit of a stab at it. And the reason I wanted to talk about it today is well, I'm working through a code base here and I'm trying to understand something, trying to understand if something's possible in this plenary plugin, this Lua code base that has some testing in it. And as I've looked up this test harness file and the first thing I realize is this file has 200 lines of code in it. I'd like to get my mind wrapped around what exactly is going on inside of it. And so instead of just paging through it and trying to find the functions here, the first thing I could do if I come up to the top here, if I just start out here by hitting the Z key and then if I do capital M here, that will collapse everything inside of the file. And then if I come down here, I can start to look to the functions. You can see here, for example, this is a function. Sorry, that's a bit hard to read with my style here or my theme here, but there's a function right there. Another one right here. This is the test directory function. Here's the test file function. There's a test directory command function as well, test pass. So now I can start to get an overview of what's in this file. I was looking for the test file function, so I can easily see that's right here now. So if I just put my cursor on that line, I can do a couple of things. I could open everything back up or I could actually just start drilling in on just this one part here. And if I do the Z key and the little O key, in other words, not capital O, in this case, okay, it's only three lines. So not that much here. By the way, if I want to collapse that back down, if that's not what I'm looking for, I can do the Z key and the C key here, little C key there. That'll collapse just what's underneath of my cursor right now. So that's just the very basics of starting the fold process. Now, the really cool thing with folds if I were to quit out of NeoVim and come back to this later here, I can open this back up and it will take me right back to where I was at. I have session restoration turned on to do that. Separate video about that, but as long as you're restoring your session, then the folds can be preserved across restart. So you come back exactly where you're at. So if I were to open up this three lines here, and then later on, I want to come back to this, I could then open things back up here. And you can see just those three lines are opened up right now. Now, if for some reason you accidentally fold a bunch of code and you didn't intend to do that, which I do all the time, I accidentally hit the Z key, I guess. So if that happens and you want to open everything back up, that's where the capital R key, so Z and capital R. Basically, when it comes to the Z keys for folding, there's the lowercase key and then there's the uppercase key. And the uppercase tends to be like everything in the file or everything in a certain context. So if, for example, I wanted to collapse everything back down, that's why there would be Z and capital M to fold everything back down here. And then again, to expand it, Z and capital R to expand it. I don't even know if there's a Z little R. Let's see here. So I've got which key opened up. Okay, there is a fold less. I'm interested to know. I've never used that one actually. So let me collapse everything with Z capital M. Let's do Z and little R this time. Okay, yeah, so it opens up basically one level, it looks like. So if I were to collapse everything again with capital M, come down here, put my cursor maybe on the test file line here. I'll do Z and little R here. So that opens things back up just one level deeper. If I do Z and little R again, opens up one more level. You can see there are still some folds though. And so that's why we're basically folding less and thus Z and capital R would be fold less, 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 basically get rid of all of the folds. So just remember Z capital R if you accidentally fold things. And again, if you're not familiar with all the shortcuts, which I'm not 100% familiar with all the fold shortcuts myself, that's where which key is wonderful. It'll actually show you in a particular context what's available here. You can see all the different options. And as I was saying, there are quite a few options for folding. We have the little C and the big C for folding underneath of the cursor. So if I put my cursor right here inside of this function, this inline function, this anonymous function, if I do the Z and little C key here, that collapses that down. However, if I open that back up, that was only one level of functions there. Here you can see I've got a function and I've got a function inside of that. So anonymous function inside of anonymous function. If I put my cursor inside of the anonymous function in the middle, then Z and the little c will just collapse that inner function. I have to do Z and little c again to collapse the next one. And actually there's three levels here. So Z and little c again, finally collapses all of that. If I want to open that up, Z and little o will open up one level. Again, Z and o will open up the next level and Z and o will open up the last level. So in this case, the if block is also a fold point. And thus you have Z and capital C will collapse everything under the cursor, all of the levels. And then Z and capital O will open everything back up under the cursor. So that's another set of key combos that's helpful to remember. So C and O are complements to each other. You also have M and R, which I kind of see as complements. With M, you're folding more. With R, you're folding less. I don't know how that mnemonic would work with R, but actually just remember reset. That's what runs through my mind. 
is when I accidentally fold things I don't want, well, how do I reset the fold process? Well, that would be the capital R then. And then there's also additional ones here, like there's an I. So if I were to collapse some stuff down here, like let's just collapse everything again. Maybe I come down here and maybe I open up this part right here, just Z and little O to open up a little bit of it. So if I want to turn folding off, I can do Z and I can do I. That'll turn off folding temporarily. And then if I want to bring it back, I can do Z and I again here, I believe. Yeah, that brings it back to exactly where it was at. So I is your toggle to fold on or fold off. Turn off all your folds, turn on all your folds. And I believe if I toggle the folds off here and I restart, yeah, it keeps the folds even across restarts, even if I've toggled folding off. It remembers that, it remembers what I had before I toggled it off, which is pretty darn cool. All right, maybe one more example here. There are a bunch of settings for folding. If I were to dump out the one for the fold and column, Right now I've got that set to zero. If I were to set that to a different value fold column here, set that maybe to three, just to make it exaggerated. Look over on the left here when I do this. You can see I have a gutter now that's a lot bigger, which I personally don't like that much, but maybe you do like it. You can see there's little plus signs here. Actually, if you have mouse support turned on, when there's a plus sign, you can click on it to expand. I could click here to collapse just that part. So if you like to be able to interactively toggle the fold on different levels and see all of that, then if you set your fold column here, maybe you just do this when you're specifically looking through a bunch of folds, you can increase this and then bring it back down when you're done. If you do that, then you have this ability to toggle things over in the gutter. And if you like that, it actually is a nice way to visually see what the fold actually entails. And then of course, in addition to the fold column, if you just take a look at the various settings here, you'll see there are a lot of options for things to configure. There's also fold expression, which dictates how the folds are essentially performed. So there's a manual mode, for example. Actually, let's see if we can do that here. Let's do set and fold method equals manual. Because right now it's set to expression. Let me check that actually. If I check the fold method here, yeah, it's expression right now. So if I set the fold method to manual, right now, if I were to reset everything with Z capital R, now I can go ahead and create my own folds here. I could literally select a range here. And now if I do Z, you can see there's an F option to create a fold that folds just that part that I had selected. It looks like 19 lines. I'm not certain if that was right or not, but let's open that back up. Did I really select 19 lines there? You can see where the fold was created though. Let's go ahead and do the other thing, which would be ZD here. Yeah, so I've created some folds here. Maybe there were some already actually because of the previous folding. You can see over in the gutter, there's a bunch of fold points here. I'm gonna do Z and capital D to get rid of all the folds underneath the cursor. You can see they're actually gone now. So now if I select something, like this right here. Make sure you let's do this right here because that's not a typical fold point because that's within a function in the middle of it and then outside of it. So if I do Z and F here, you can see I just fold up those five lines that I had selected. So if I do Z D here, that gets rid of that then. I could maybe, if I wanted to fold this part right here, Z F, all right. And then if I wanted to fold this part right here, Z F, and then I could do Z D here just to get rid of one of those folds, that topmost one. You can see I've still got the innermost one there. So yeah, if you haven't tried out folding or if you find it just to be frustrating that it accidentally shows up every once in a while because you hit the Z key and didn't realize it, that's fine. I would encourage you to take a moment and work through some of the options. Again, if you aren't familiar with what's available, the which key plugin is a great way to see what's available with folds because there's so many different options. It's a good reference just to have to be able to look through the list here and figure out what's possible in a given situation. So check that out. I actually have a separate video about that. If you're curious about that, that's the which key plugin. And yeah, take a stab at trying folds. I think it's well worth the time, especially when you have a big file and you're trying to work through it. Well, folding can be a great way to figure out where exactly you wanna go.